Okay. All right, boys and girls, today the focus is going to be on writing and solving equations for each different type of operation. We're going to start on page 16. And on this page, we're actually not going to do the full process. We're, we're going to focus on how to tell what type of equation we're working with, and then we're going to practice writing the equation. We're not going to go through and solve and check these. We're going to do, we're just going to practice writing equations. And then the, the next or the next page, that's where we're actually going to do the work of solving them and then, and then checking them. So I'm going to give you some tips here about how to notice when it's a certain type of equation. But before we do that, the bottom of the page, okay, we're going to write our little patterns here. So we have um, addition. Addition is going to be variable plus the part equals the total. That's what an addition equation will, will look like in sixth grade. We have subtraction, which will be um, variable minus the part equals the part. So it doesn't matter, again, which part goes where, but it does matter that the variable goes first. Multiplication or molt, molt, I guess, um, is going to be the part times the variable, or variable times part, doesn't matter the order, equals the total. And then last but not least, we got division. And division is variable divided by part equals the part. And what's nice about this, this subtraction and division are similar because it doesn't matter what order the numbers go in, or it doesn't matter which number goes where, but it does matter that the variable goes first. Variable minus part, variable divided by part. Okay. All right, so let's try these out. Again, this is just, we're just practicing writing equations here, and then on the other page we'll write and solve them. Taylor Swift played guitar on one-fourth of the songs she performed at a recent concert. Write and solve an equation to determine how many total songs she played if she played nine songs on the guitar. Now, the first thing is, well, let's write the let statement. Um, total songs. We're looking for the total songs. So we're going to let um, maybe S equal total number of songs. It says determine how many total songs she played. Okay. So that's, that's, that gives me a clue that we don't have the total. What also gives me a clue for this one is that it has a fraction there. She played one-fourth of the songs on um, guitar. So when I see a, a, a fraction like that, and so, especially in sixth grade, I'm thinking it's going to be division. I'm thinking it's going to be division. So if we take the total number of songs, we take one-fourth of that, that's going to equal 9 because one-fourth of the songs was 9. So when I see a fraction, I'm thinking divide. So it's because it's one-fourth, we'll divide by 4. So to write this equation, it would be S, because we're always going to start with division. We start with the variable divided by 4 equals 9. Now, normally, we would solve and then check it, but again, this page, we're just practicing writing them. If you want to go ahead and solve and check that, that'd be super duper, but that's all we need for now because we're practicing for the next page when we actually, um, we actually solve and check it. All right, let's see this one. At OPHS in 2002, many chose to buy multiple lunches when tacos were offered. At the time, you could buy four lunches for five dollars and twenty cents write and, write and solve an equation to determine the cost of each lunch so we want to find the cost of each lunch okay so we're going to let um c maybe equal cost of each lunch so let's look at what we have here. We have, you could buy four lunches for $5.20. So if we buy four and the cost of each lunch is C, 
To me, this seems like a multiplication equation because we want to find the cost of each lunch. That kind of, and she buys multiple lunches. So I, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be multiplication. That's what I'm thinking. So if you take the number of lunches she buys, which is four, times the cost of each lunch, that would give you the total. And that's what a multiplication equation is. It's a part times the variable equals the total. And that's what $5.20 is. So I'm thinking that's what, that's what the equation is going to look like. Okay, and again, if you wanted to solve and check that, you could. All right, let's see. The St. Louis Arch is 630 feet tall. This is 75 feet taller than the Washington Monument. Write and solve an equation to determine the height of the Washington Monument. So that's what we're trying to find here. So maybe we'll let h equal height of, I'm just going to abbreviate Washington Monument. Washington Monument. All right, so let's think about this. St. Louis Arch is 630 feet. This, or the St. Louis Arch, is 75 feet taller than the Washington Monument. So I'm thinking, like, if we take the Washington Monument a height, H, and we add to it 75, because the Washington Monument is shorter, take H, add 75, we should get the total. So this is... This is the total because this is more than the Washington Monument. I'm thinking this is a part. So to write an addition equation, addition equations, remember, are variable plus the part equals the total. The variable is h plus the part is 75. That equals the total, which is 630. Okay, so that, that was an, an example of an addition equation. Equation. The last one. So we did division, we did multiplication, we did addition. I'm thinking this one might be a subtraction. That's just that's just my thought. Barack Obama was 47 years old when he was elected president. He was president for two four-year terms. That means two four-year terms would mean eight years. He was president for eight years. Write and solve an addition, or I'm sorry, write and solve an equation to determine the age of Barack Obama when he left office. So we find, want to find the age of Barack Obama when he left. So we're going to let maybe A equal Barack Obama's age. when he left office. Perfect. Okay. All right. Now, uh, I'm thinking we're going to write a subtraction equation. So I know that subtraction equations are variable minus the part equals the part. So I know I'm going to start with the variable because this number A is going to be greater than 47. So A is what we're looking for. Now, if we subtract 8 from his, when he was done being president, if we subtract 8 from that, we should get the age he started out as. So 8's apart, 47's apart. We could do A minus 47 equals 8 to show the difference between the ages when he was in office, but this would also work. So this is an example of a subtraction equation. So again, we're just practicing writing the equations. On the other side now, we're actually going to practice writing and solving them. All right. Here oh, we go. Oop, wrong, wrong, wrong order there. Wrong direction. Yes, here, we, here, they, here they are. All right, so at the bottom, again, it's a good idea to write the patterns down because, again, these, these are going to come up... Um, in what we're doing right now, addition equations, variable plus the part equals the total. Subtraction equations, 
is going to be variable minus the part equals the part. Multiplication. Multiplication is going to be the, um, well, you could do variable. I mean, you know what? I'm going to do variable times part equals total or part times variable. It doesn't matter the order, but the total is going to be by itself. And then with division, we have variable divided by part equals part. Okay. All right, so let's see if we can write and solve some of these equations here. Here we go. And again, if any point you want to try, you you know, you want to get started, but try them on your own, you can always pause and then check with me at the end of the problem. One fourth of a bag of Skittles was eaten by a raccoon. Ooh. If twenty four Skittles were eaten, write and solve an equation to find the total number of Skittles in the bag. That's what we're trying to find. So that's what our let statement is going to be. This is based on a true story, by the way. So we're going to let S equal total number of Skittles. Now, I hope that when you heard that, when I read that one, you saw that fraction there. And that fraction is going to be a key word because that's going to tell us, okay, this is, this is probably a division. If you see a fraction like that in there in sixth grade, this is probably a division equation. So division equations, as we saw at the bottom, are variable divided by the part equals the part. So we're going to start with the variable. S divided by 4, because it's 1 fourth, so that tells, tells us we're going to divide by 4, equals 24. Now, at this point, you can solve and check that on your own, but if you want to solve and check it with me, you can. Just um, choose one or the other. Um, make sure to solve it. So to solve a division equation, that's, I was trying to make that a better S, but it grew worse. All right. We're going to do the opposite of divide by 4. I'm going to put my wall here. The opposite of divide by 4 would be multiply by 4. So on both sides... We're going to multiply by 4 to figure out how many total Skittles we started with. Those 4s cancel out, and we get S equals 24 times 4. I'm just going to do that off to the side. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So we started out with 96 Skittles, and the raccoon ate one, one fourth of them. Oh, boy. There's still some left, though, that the raccoon didn't get. So to check this, we'll write the equation equals 24. We'll start out with the original equation. Three-step check. 96 divided by 4 equals 24. Now, I've kind of already checked it here by doing this math. So I'm, pretty, I'm very confident that 96 divided by 4, because 24 divided by 4 is 6, 20, 96, this would be 24 as well. And that checks out. Now, there's one last thing we're going to do and, and write the answer. Um, and if you tried that one on your own, that's awesome. We're going to say um, there were a total of 96 Skittles in the bag. Okay. Whoop got the A. All right, let's try, let's try the next one. Martin. Martin has been to six less states than Helen. Okay. Martin has been to 39 states. Write and solve an equation to find the total number of states Helen has, should be, has visited. Okay. So, I don't know, H for Helen? Helen's back again. Helen was in an original or previous problem. I forgot about what. But let H equal total number of states Helen visited. Okay. So let's think about this. Um, I'm thinking Martin, six, six less states. Martin's been 39. Martin has been to six less states. 
So Helen's been to more states. So I'm thinking like, it, because Helen's been to more states than Martin, here's Helen's states. We're always going to start with that variable. We'll subtract 6. If you have Helen, which, who visited more states, and you subtract 6, you should get the number of states that Martin has been to, which would be 39. So this is a subtraction equation. And it's going to look like that. A variable minus a part equals a part. So it, it, if it was h minus 39, too, equals 6, that would be fine. All right, let's, let's solve it. Let's do our wall. Again, if you want to do this one on your own, go for it. So to get rid of the minus 6, we're going to add 6 to both sides. And we get, let's cancel out, we get h equals 9 plus 6 is 15. 1 plus 3 is 4. Helen's been to 45 states. Way to go, Helen. That's, all, that's almost all the states. So Martin and Helen have both been to quite a, quite a few states. Helen takes the cake because she's been to 45. She's five short. I wonder what the five states are that she has not been to. When, she's, when is she going to get there? All right, so this three-step check, of course. We're going to check it, rewrite the equation. 45 minus 6 equals 39. Now, this one we can kind of do in our head. Like 45 minus 5 is 40. So 45 minus 6 would be one more than that. It's going to be 39 equals 39, and that's a little check there. Last thing, Helen, we'll write the answer. Helen has visited 45 states. Whew. Okay. Okay, now, um, try a couple more here. So again, we did. We already did a division. We already did a subtraction. So we'll keep that in mind as we keep going, because I don't think we'll double up here. Let's see. Uh, Jerry or Gary? Jerry bought eight boxes of donuts. Nice. Each box. Now I'm already thinking it's going to be division or, mul or, or multiplication because we have eight boxes. Each box. Okay, I'm getting the feeling that this might be multiplication. Each box had the same number of donuts inside. The total number of donuts purchased was 104. Write and solve an equation to find how many donuts were in each box. I'm, right off the bat, I'm thinking that's going to be multiplication because we have each per box. Um, I, I'm thinking that's multiplication. So we're going to let, I don't know, D equal number of uh, donuts per box. And again, you want to try this one on your own go for it all right so multiplication equation we'll start with the variable times what would the part be i guess the part would be the number uh, the number of boxes which would be eight so if you take the number of donuts per box you multiply it by the number of boxes you should get the total which is 104 total donuts it's quite a bit okay and what we'll do is, to get rid of times or multiplication, we'll divide. Do a little wall there. D divide by 8 on one side. So we're doing the inverse. Divide by 8 on the other. The 8s cancel out. And we get D equals. All right, so 104 divided by 8. I'm going to do that off to the side right here. 104. It's always a good idea to actually check the math. It goes into 1, 0 times. It goes into 10 once. 1 times 8 is 8. 10 minus 8 is 2. Bring down the 4. 8 goes into 24 a 3 times, and there it is. 13. That's a baker's dozen. There were 13 donuts per box. A baker's dozen, as they call it. All right. Let's check it. D times 8 equals 104. Rewrite it. Instead of D, we'll put 13 times 8 equals 104. I'm just going to double check that real quick. 3 times 8 is 24. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 2 is. I just, okay, it's 104. All right. Oh, I was thinking something. I was thinking of addition. All right, so we're good. 
That's 104 equals 104. Oh, yeah. Okay, we got to just gonna write the answer real quick. I'm not going to fit it in here. Um, there were 13 donuts per box. So that's a short answer. Nice. You can see that. Okay, so let me give you a hint here. We did division. We did subtraction. We did a multiplication equation. I'm thinking this is going to be addition. Let's see. Last one here. We got Ben and Ted. Ben and Ted write a cookbook together. There were 175 total recipes in the cookbook. All right, we got the total here. If Ted wrote 82 recipes, how many did Ben write? So that's a part here. Yeah, I think this is addition. How many write and, uh, and solve an equation to find the total number of recipes Ben wrote? All right. So we're going to let, I don't know, uh, B or R. Let R. You can use another letter if you want. Um, number of recipes Ben wrote. This sounds like an addition equation to me. We'll start with the variable, R. If we add what Ted wrote, which would be 82, so that's Ben's plus Ted's, we should get 175. All right, again, if you want to try that one on your own, go for it. Little wall here. We'll subtract 82 from both sides. Here we go. All right. Plus 82, minus 82, cancel. 5 minus 2 is 3. 17 minus 8 would be 9. So it looks like Ben contributed more than Ted to the cookbook. We have R left on this side. R equals 93. So we'd love to would love to read this cookbook here that Ben and Ted put together. R plus 82. We're going to check it out. Equals 175. R was 93 plus 82 equals 175. I'm just going to take a second to check this. 3 plus 2 is 5. 8 plus 9 is oh, 175. Got it. That's 175, which equals 175. And that's a check. Last, last but not least, I uh, will say Ben wrote 93 recipes. Okay, so next time in class, what we're going to do, actually, this will be different. We're going to do the review packet in class um, instead of remotely, um, just so I can give you some feedback and, and, and stuff like that. So, um, so we'll do the review packet next class, and the class after that will be the test. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, if not, I hope you have a great day. And if, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. All right, bye-bye.